Hi, good evening. Also for Yeah, yeah, in Yani Ejo. So, and good evening to all the yeah. brethren on, on call. So, it's, so for let me let me just do a quick yeah. a quick one. Um, let me say again, guys. Um, we are we are all welcome again. Um, tonight, um, interaction. That's how I think Pastor Eugene wants to put it. Um, it's about the presence of God, and I would say that um, uh, Eugene Zita wants us to make it very um, much more interactive. So let's start putting our questions down so that if you have any question whilst it goes through, um, in the chat session, you can put your question yeah. down and then um, he will take it up from the chat session. Mm -hmm. um, also for you, Jim Zuta, we are, we are so grateful for, um, for accepting our invitation. It's lovely um, and it's, it's, it's powerful. God bless you. Thank you so much. We know we are going to have a fruitful and a blessed time with you. You are welcome the name to of our music training. Yeah. So over to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. And thanks to all the senior brethren and um, sisters and sisters and men and women of God in the house. Um, I must say that I deem it a great privilege to be here. And um, before I say anything, I want us to share a word of prayer. Um, Father, we want to thank you so much for this time in your presence. And we ask that, Lord, um, I will not just be speaking out of my experience, but be led of your word to be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So our topic for tonight is the musician and then um, the presence of God. And we're giving a scripture. I want to read it quickly. Um, 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. And this is what is written there. And the Levites who were the singers and all those of Asaph and Heman and Jeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white. Leaning, having instruments and harps, one sound to be heard um, in prison and thank. And when they lifted up their voice with their trumpets and cymbal, instruments of music, and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That the house, that the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Amen. Um, most of the times when we talk about the presence of God, what um, we normally refer to is the manifest presence of God, where, which is characterized by the Shekinah glory. That is a visible expression of the more like sometimes a brightness or a cloud, a cloud or something physical. So, um, in terms of our music ministry, normally when we see the presence of God is in a place, then maybe someone has played a, a song or ministered in a particular way powerfully, and so, um. The whole place has become some way um, heavy, bizarre, and then sometimes people would either be crying or be rolling all over the place. People will be speaking in tongues, and there will be various manifestations, and that is what we normally would describe as the presence of God. But this evening, let me start from this angle, and then we'll come and end around uh, the, the scripture will be given. So, so by, and I'll try not to do a lot of uh, too much uh, Bible um, references so that we can flow a little. 
Um, normally, let us um, define the presence of God as anywhere God is, whether visibly or invisibly. So according to um, our Christian theology, we believe that, that we believe in the omni presence of God. That is, for us, our faith is that God is present everywhere. So I want us to put that at the back of our mind. So right from Genesis, we see God starting, um, setting creation into motion and God being present during in creation. And then when Adam was created in the cool of the night, God would always be there present and would be um, will be having fellowship or interaction with them. Now Adam and Eve sinned, and then they lost that that tangible or visible or experiential presence of God. And then they move out, and then we, we came to see interactions between God and occasional interactions between God and Cain, God, Abel, God, Noah. We came to learn that people like Enoch knew God. And then we came to the point of um, Abraham. Now God started revealing, there was a, such a long silence, and then God started revealing himself again. Now the contact, they had begun to have, have interactions with God and based on um, the presence of an altar. Then he moved on to the time of Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. And God signified his presence with the pres uh, presence of the Ark of the Covenant in a tabernacle. It goes on and came to the time of King Solomon. And then the Ark was moved from a tabernacle, uh, from David's tabernacle, and then it was moved into um, the temple. And then this was where the, uh, the, um, during the dedication, the musicians, according to the order of um, David, were brought in to perform their musical duties. Now, when you read that scripture very, very well, you notice that there were certain things that they did that actually led to the presence of the Lord coming. From verse 10, you will notice from verse, I think verse 2, you will read about how they prepare themselves in accordance with the, the laws of the details of Moses and the details of David. You will notice the things that were found inside the ark. There was in the ark from verse 10, there was in the ark except the two tablets. Um, which Moses put there at Horeb. So that is, if you look at it carefully, let me see. Um, that is verse. Yeah, so when you read, you will notice that the word of the tablets, the word of God was found in the ark. There was also um, the witness of manna, which talks about their testimony, the testimony of the Israelites as they came together. Then also um, verse 11 says that and it came to pass when the priest came out of the most holy place for all of them present had sanctified themselves. And then there was also their unity as they sang together. And then it also came up to what they sang about. So I'm, I'm talking about the presence of God at a place. So in the Old Testament, God confined his presence to certain places. You remember um, in Genesis, um, Jacob was on his way to Laban and he slept at a place. And he dreamt that angels were ascending and descending. Then he woke up and said that, hey, God was in this place and I did not know. So what am I at arriving at? There is the general presence of God that is everywhere. Then there is the presence of God that is a place. And that is how God reveals himself to us. So generally in all creation, God is everywhere. 
but there are certain places and certain place situations where God will reveal himself to his people. And he does that when certain factors are, um, are what do you call it, are obeyed. So in the case of the temple, there was consecration, there was unity, there was purpose. Even if you look at, they said that they were clothed in white and they stood at a particular point on the altar. So all these preparations are needed. Now let's come and talk about the music ministry. So music has always been had even existed before God started creation. When you read Job, I forgot the exact scripture, it says that on the dawn of creation, when God was creating, the sons of God, the, the sons of God, they sang. So music is God's divine construct that actually he created, and I believe is for his pleasure. That was used as a gift and a blessing unto us. So having said that about the presence of God, let us also look at what happens um, with regards to music in First Samuel chapter 16. And I'm reading from the chapter 16 verse um, 1 Samuel 16. I'm reading from verse 14 down. 1 Samuel 16, verse 14 down. Now, we notice that one of the most important people with regards to music in the Bible is then David the shepherd boy. Yeah. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, he had been anointed by King, by King, uh, by the prophet Samuel. And they, when Saul had the issue of disobedience and the spirit was, evil spirit was saying to, to bring depression upon him, the servants recommended that David be brought to minister to him to ease and to take away that, um, that spirit. When David was being brought, they spelled out three criteria that spells David out from all the people who were musicians in Israel by then. The first thing was that he was a man of excellent skill. Second thing spoke about, second criteria spoke about David's character, godly character and his personality. Now in verse 18, the verse last line, he spoke especially about Sam. He said that, and the Lord was with him. That is the presence of the Lord. Now, any time for us who are, who are called musicians, we carry this special grace of not bringing the presence of the Lord but facilitating the congregation more to be, become more aware of God's presence that is already present. Because pay attention to this. Um, in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, it says that wherever, wherever two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. That speaks about the presence of God. But the work or the function of the music minister is to help the congregation to become aware of that presence. Because God would manifest himself in any way, and he's already manifesting himself when we gather. But then we have to be in a kind of mindset, and we have to be in a kind of um, position where we can focus on God as he reveals himself to us. And so that, that ability is very, very special to the Christian musician. Why? Because God was with David. Because during David's formative uh, time as a minister, he spent a lot of time with God. And the only time God can be with you is when you are with God. And because of the, um, the spiritual and emotive nature of music, anytime a musician is saturated with the presence of God by making effort to spend time with God, 
he or she becomes a carrier of that presence. So when he stands before the presence of God, he's able Hello, Pastor Eugene. I think your network able to make people aware of that presence. That's too very, very uh, too Okay, guys, I think um, Pastor Eugene is having a low issue with um, his internet. Um, let's wait slightly for him to join in again. Okay, he's back. Can you hear me, please? Yeah, you're back now. Yeah, okay. I think I will turn off my video briefly so that my bandwidth can stay. Okay, then I'll, right. then I'll come back for questions. Praise the Lord, please. I hope you are following so far. Yeah, we yeah. are. Great. So, anytime the music minister gets to stand to minister or to, to sing a song, he's not just coming with with um with a musical skill but he's coming with all his spiritual preparation that he he's made he or she has made to be able to present and deliver the music he's presenting therefore the spirit behind the song is made manifested in the environment where he is ministering it's very very important but having said that I want us to be very, very aware that especially for us in the New Testament era, we do not bring down the presence of God. We rather facilitate the entire process because God is there. I want to stress that thing. God is already there, ready to meet us. Most of the times, the, it's our hearts that... Um, uh, find it difficult to get ready and to focus on the Lord. So what our work as musicians do is we prepare ourselves, we prepare our ministry, and then it becomes something like an enabler or an enabling uh, tool to help the congregation connect to God. Very, very important. And do not forget that in the New Testament, the ark of God has now moved out of the Holy of Holies in a place or a location in the temple and has now been placed in our heart. Yes. So let me hit upon that again. In fact, that is the entire message I came to deliver tonight. That our role as music ministers is not to produce an, uh, the presence of God. We can't produce it. We don't have the grace and the yeah. mandate. The yeah. presence of God is so precious and so heavy and so consuming that even when Moses asked that he would see the presence of God, God had to hide him and let him see his back. And so we are rather, we are rather people who facilitate. We are enablers. We enable. And what helps us to be able to enable uh, the presence of like the the presence of God to be made manifested amongst us is that we ourselves and for all New Testament believers, we have become locations of the ark. We have become locations for the ark. He said, do you not know that your, temple, your, your, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit in whom the Holy Spirit dwells? When Jesus died, the, 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 holy of, the curtain that was separating the Holy of Holies was torn from top to bottom. And so he gave us, every one of us, access into the presence of God. 
So things like the, mu the music we do actually just facilitate the presence of God. And please, let us all note, also note that music per se, as in a song per se, yes, it creates an environment, but that environment it creates is not necessarily the presence of God. Music has the ability to create a mood. Every music creates a mood or an emotion. Love songs will make people want to, like, let me say, lustful songs. What will want to make people, it arouses lust in people. Violent songs would arouse violence in people. Patriotic songs arouse patriotism in people. Spiritual songs arouse spirit. Uh, okay, godly songs arouse godliness in people. And therefore, not just the music, but the content of the music and the relationship between the content of the music and the one presenting the music all come together to affect the kind of atmosphere whether it will be enabling or not to the presence of God. So if you, you notice, um, I'm sure we have heard about this scripture that says, uh, in Psalm 22 verse 3, that says that um, God is enthroned in the praises of Israel. God is enthroned in the praises of Israel. Now, the word praise there, we know there are various uh, names or terms for praise in in Israel. The word praise there is called Tehillah. So God is enthroned in the Tehillah of Israel. And Tehillah means singing with a loud voice. Singing with a loud voice. When we go and sing any, any song with a loud voice, God will not be enthroned in it. But when we sing about God, when we sing about him in a loud voice, it is that singing that will bring God down. So God is not responding necessarily to the music, but God is responding to the spirit behind the music and then the reason why we are singing that song. So in Matthew 20, he says that where two or three are gathered in my name, in my name, in my name. God responded to David because David had a relationship with him. God responded to, um, to the Tehillah because Tehillah is about him. God responded to um, the Levites and the priests in 2 Chronicles chapter 5 because Whatever they are doing, all the activities they are doing is about him. Now, let me, let, let me tell you, announce to you also that the music is just the tool, but the content of the music is what defines whether God will re, people will respond to God or God would allow himself to be, yeah. to be seen or to be interacted with. It's very, very important. Very, 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 very important. And therefore, for us, especially in the New Testament, what are some of the positions we have to put ourselves in in order for us to be uh, people who are effective enablers of the presence of God between the congregation we minister to and then the God we stand before, we bring them before? Number one is, if you notice, um, like the scripture, number one is our our fellowship with God through his word. Very, very important. Our fellowship with God through his word. God will respond to his word. God will respond to his word. And then our preparation before him in terms of our, our righteous living. But then also, we should also not forget that our righteousness is of the Lord. So there are two righteousnesses we are talking about here the imputed righteousness which gives us access into his presence 
and then the day-to-day -day righteousness, which is our right, practical right living. Mm -hmm. Practical right living. So imputed righteousness and it, it demands that, or rather enables us to live pract uh, right practically in our daily lives. So because I am righteous, I live righteously. Very, very important. And then with regards to a team like what like ours here, the presence of God cannot be cannot be uh, facilitated by a group of people who are disjointed, who is who. Basically, you notice that there was unity between the singers, and there was unity, there was unity among the singers, unity among the instrumentalists, and unity between them. So intra unity and then um, uh, inter unity in all the parts also. Then let's come and talk about what they, who they were singing about. They were singing about God. The tehillah they did there was about God. It was not entertainment focused, where the aim was to amuse someone, where the aim was to make people happy. If there is anything we do in our music, the, the, the anything that would be the, the best that I could say in terms of semblance to entertainment is that through our music, we help the church or the congregation or the audience to experience or express the joy of the Lord. And that is not entertainment because the joy of the Lord brings about the manifestation of his strength in us as we encounter his presence. It is very, um, this virtual space is, is very surreal. So I hope I'm making some sense. Yeah, we are listening. <laughs> we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord so much. We thank the Lord so much. So when you also look, listen to, there's also another scripture we really talk about, and then we make it seem as if it is the song that brought about the miracle. Paul and Silas in Acts 16, 25, 26. When you, op you re read that scripture, you will notice carefully that they were praying and singing. They were praying and singing. What actually brought about the, um, the miraculous and the shaking of the, of the prison cells was their faith in, in God and God's ability to deliver them or to do something about the situation. The music, the singing they, they did there was only a facilitation of the entire process. So very, very important that for the music minister to be able to attract the presence of God, he or she must be a career of an experience and having a knowledge of who his or her God is. Right. So that when we stand before people and we are ministering, we are not just doing music. We live in a time where quali the quality of music, how bright, important, and necessary, has become more like glorified over having the minister having the capacity to really have a relationship and with God. Such that when I stand there and I'm singing about um, um, God being able to deliver, then right there because of my faith in God and in what I'm singing, because I've had an experience and a, gone through a process and a journey with him, that the Holy Spirit can begin to brood over the very lyrics I'm singing. And if there's somebody who needs deliverance, healing, salvation, or a breakthrough of some sort in the audience, that immediately, as I begin to minister, God begins to move. And so that is the kind of interaction that the Lord is expecting us to have with the music we, we do and the kind of effect and impact that we should have. I think I've spoken a lot. I believe when there are questions, it will help to bring the other aspects of what I would want to uh, talk about to be. But let me end by saying this thing, that the, our music ministry is, is, 
is, um, is such a great enabler to the presence of God as we have it. Not because we, we are magicians who manufacture that presence, but because we are carriers of the presence. And so just like the word minister will come and the pastor will come and stand and begin to, after, because they are prepared and engaged God and after the minister, the word of God, the, the word of God comes out with such power and grace. The same way, because we've also had a great interaction with God in fellowship and relationship with him, we are able to stand before, and when we do that, the Holy Spirit is able to move. If we read carefully 1 Samuel 16, verse 14 to 23, when you read at 23, it says that, and any time, and any time, David stood before King the spirit distressing stalk came upon him and David ministered. That distressing spirit will leave him and the king will be well again. Being carriers of God's grace and presence by virtue of um, our interact, our fellowship with him and our relationship with him actually helps us to be very effective in doing this. And this um, impact is similar to the impact in our test in Second Chronicles chapter, chapter chapter five, where because of their their orientation between between them and between God, when they were they came and they are doing the work, the presence of God responded, or God responded. So, like I said, they did not manufacture the presence; they did not bring down the presence. The presence of God was there. It was God who asked that the temple be built. But because they positioned themselves in a way, they were able to let that presence be made manifested. That notwithstanding, in our administrations now, it is not every manifestation we see that alludes to the presence of God. Sometimes it's possible that you will not see anything and so God would have done his work amongst his people. God brought Elijah, the angel of the Lord brought Elijah to the caves. And then God, uh, there was a, a, an earthquake, but God was not there. There was a, a storm, God was not there. There was wind blowing, God was not there. But God appeared and spoke to his, son, his servant in a still small voice. So sometimes the presence of God is not dramatic. And sometimes it also is. So how do you measure whether the presence of God has come? The measure of the presence, that the presence of God is there is normally the measure of interaction we've had with him in our fellowships. So that when we gather, by faith, we know that God is there and God would move and do what he, God, wants to do. I want to end here and then leave time for questions. God bless you. You can, actually, bless yeah, you can actually put on your video and ask your question and then we all write, or write it in the chat box. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Um, just so it, it, becomes, it becomes very interactive. interactive. If, you yes, can, yes, if you can. If you can. You can... Um, Put your video on if you have a question or we can actually all put our video on so that we know they are human beings here <laughs> it's danny it's so surreal trust me <laughs> well we know we they are human beings here and it makes interaction but um there are three things i picked from here which are so powerful and the first yeah. one being that um we actually enable and facilitate, but yeah. we don't necessarily create the presence of God ourselves. And um, also, Danny, yeah. um, let me speak on that one. Um, if we we are we if we we actually have the power to bring down the presence of God, then we'll be more like magicians. Yeah. Okay. Who conjure like we conjure at will, the presence of God in a place. But we don't control God. He controls us. So we rather 
fulfill certain provisions and, and then have faith that he would respond to us or reveal himself to us. Amen. Amen. Again, I would say uh, we want to know there are human beings here. So if you can, kindly um, put your video on. I think um, uh, Zuta also has but few problems, but he will try to put his video on so we know he's the real person talking. Um, then I also took um, a point that all songs actually, like you're saying, um, create a sort of mood. So the fact yes. that there's an environment a song creates that does not necessarily mean that it has the presence of God. And yes, another yes. thing I picked, which is so important, is that one has to have the experience, personal experience with God, and also be a career, um, a career of the presence of God to be able to get God's presence here. And there are a few exactly. questions I, I, I got before. Oh, yeah. Okay. before we began and as the questions come in let me see if i can put one or two questions we want to be very practical because i think yeah. we have ministers here we have praise and worship leaders here and one of the most difficult things is that sometimes i would have said that since the building of god itself should have god's presence because it's a church it should have been yeah. very easy whilst you mount up on stage and you are singing or you are leading people to worship that the presence of god should come but most yeah. of us will attest to the fact that sometimes when you are leading, you can tell that it takes time to be able to invoke God's presence. Or you can even you tell when you are watching you know some. Nika, Nika. You know Nikanika? Nikanika. <laughs> I'm sure somebody will know Nikanika. Yeah. Old, um, uh, oh, you know, Gifty. Gift Love. Gift Love knows. So the old um, corn meal. Yeah. The one that uses diesel. Yeah, yeah. The way they will have to spark it. Wine it, like, wine it, wine time. it for a while. Yeah. Wine it, wine it, wine it. Yeah, so that's what normally happens like that. That's why I understand the feeling. Yeah, so it's as if got yet. So you can also, and, and it takes time before you realize that uh, you yourself can feel the presence of God. And the other yeah. ministers that, um, whether it's grace or it's, they are special, but once they mount, up, mount um, the pulpit, you can easily tell that the person has brought the presence of God and others don't. So um, the first question I think someone sent, it's um, how to really literally, as a minister, as a worship leader, as a praise leader, how to literally want to mount up stage to literally get people into the presence of God. Um, that was I, the first question, if you can uh, okay. slightly touch on it. Yeah. Can we, can we really want to ask all, um, okay, so that's that's the first one, and the second one is how it's how do you select your songs? Is are there specific songs that you choose <laughs> that would actually bring the presence of God, or when you are supposed to do worship and you sing praise songs, the presence, you know, yeah, I am, or when you are supposed to do worship and you you are supposed to do praises and you sing worship songs, the presence, and the am, that's that's also one thing. Um, then okay. another, the third question is, sometimes you realize that the only person who feels the presence of God is, is the minister standing on stage and the audience are far away. So how do you get the audience also to be in the presence of God? If you can touch on these three things quickly for us, I'm sure questions will start coming in. Guys, let's try and ask our practical questions. All right. Okay, so Daniel, let us start with, so we, have been, we are trying to be practical. Let us start with, Question one. No, question two. Please, can you repeat question two for me? Um, the songs. The question two is about the songs. Are, that, are there specific okay, so songs? Me, yeah. Great. So the, let me get it. First one says that how do you, why is it that some people are able to more like in quotes, sort of, the moment they man stage, there's a change in the atmosphere, yeah. regardless of what was happening before. Yeah. Number one. Number two, there's also, now, how do you select songs? Is it that there are certain songs that carry presence? Yeah. Or, or the last one is... Um, how to get the audience yeah. also to be in the presence of God because they are the ones you are leading anyway. Okay. So number one, let me start from the second song. Um, it is not necessarily the song that brings the presence of God down. Just like we are saying, 
and it's not also necessarily the um it's not necessarily the praise leader or the song leader that also brings the presence down but god responds to the song leader or the worship leader or the instrumentalist please am i making some sense yeah god responds to the um worship leader the instrumentalist or the pre, the song leader this is what I'm saying you might I, I mentioned about in first samuel 16 verse 18 that and the lord was with him the day i was reading that thing that's what the lord told me what i mean by what anointing is all about this is what anointing is all about anointing is not you can go and drink gallons of anointing oil it will not be anointed what brings about your anointing is the presence of God with you, the minister. That is where it all starts, the minister. That is where it all starts. And how do you grow that? God was with David. And so it means that David made time to fellowship with God. See, most of us just pay lip service when we are asked that you have to spend time in your closet with God alone on yourself. Coming to what we do at church, reading the Bible at church and everything there is just a public or corporate worship that is facilitated by what you do in your closet. In your closet. Very, very important. See, this particular closet um, intimacy development is what affects the entire temperature of the church when it comes to manifestation of the presence of God in terms of signs and wonders, miracles, the efficacy of and the impact of the word of God that is being, um, that is being um, preached on a pulpit. Let me give you two, two, audience, uh, two congregations. Every member of congregation A, when they go home, they spend time to pray uh, in their personal devotions as they grow personally. They also spend time to invest in the life, the prayer for the church, prayer for the service, prayer for every aspect of the growth of the church. So they themselves are growing and they are contributing to the growth of the church. So this is what happens. The presence of God in the New Testament does not require, uh, reside in the temple. It resides in all the believers. So Daniel brings the presence or the relationship he has cultivated with God. So when Daniel turns up, when he's ministering, God turns up. Antiochia came also having prayed into the seven. She's also have a personal relationship with God. So when she's there and the song is, being, is going on, God is also dead because of her. So the thing becomes like little, little, little presence fires if I can say that. And then when we all, that is the beauty of corporate worship. I bring my little fire, you bring your little fire. And when we come together, it is a bonfire. It's one of the things that separates successful um, worship times from unsuccessful ones. So the key, the key, right, so I'm using Presence and anointing sort of interchangeably. So presence is actually more of that God is there. And anointing is, presence is the, when God is there. And anointing is the grace upon God being with a person so that whenever God, the person is also doing something, God would appear. So I'm just using yeah. it interchangeably. Yes, inter interchangeably. So, Danny, for question one, the difference between A and B is that A, most at times, is more intimate with God, and B is a lukewarm. No, number one. Number two, sometimes uh, Minister B may have set 
an on and off and on and off manifestation when he is ministering once a time, once a while, which will fluctuate with the, the way he handles his, himself and his relationship with God. Sometimes also, somebody has not prepared at all by spending time with God. But at the end of the day, God will turn up. Sometimes God does not look at the one leading. Sometimes he looks at the people who are being led. And decides that he doesn't want to disgrace himself. He would honor his word for his name's sake. How do, I, how do we choose songs? This is the way I do mine. Normally, when I'm invited to a place, I will normally pray into it. And then I would um, look out for the kind of burdens the Lord will lay on my heart for the service. And then I would uh, select songs that will express the broad spectrum of that kind of burden. Sometimes he lays on your heart when you go talk, uh, minister to them about my faithfulness. So then I will do the choosing of the song that will express God's faithfulness or his love, or his healing, or whatever. During re preparation and rehearsal towards that program, you would realize that you, 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 you are convicted strongly about a particular song rather than another song, or about a particular part rather than another song. And so that is how I select my songs to, uh, to go and minister. And even during the songs, because you have a relationship with God, you still keep your sensitivity up listening just in case the Lord, the Holy Spirit will drop a song out of nowhere because of somebody who just entered in or someone who just needed that particular song. And then that is how it also works. Now, I, for the third one, there are certain things you can't control. One of the things you can do is to team up with your leaders to teach the church how to prepare themselves for service, which will include preparing for the presence of God. So actually asking God that today, we want to experience, like every church member has that posture. And during worship, we let them be conscious of the responses they give to us during praise. Uh, also, hold worship. on. With, with what you are saying, are you saying that just like um, when a man of God is ministering and needs the individual being ministered to, to add his faith so that yes. out of his faith um, he can receive his feeling. Are you, are you, uh, his healing. Are you saying that if the congregation themselves are not prepared to receive oh. the presence of God, it affects the entire atmosphere in, in, in during the worship time? Yes, Danny, Danny. I wish I can give you a diagram of what the music minister or in this case, my specialty is in uh, praise and worship, what the praise and worship leader or the music minister does. So the music minister at the time, see, the whole service is a worship service. The senior worshiper is the head pastor. But there are different aspects of the worship service, which is all pockets of worship that make the worship whole. So during um, offering time, giving is the way we are expressing our worship. Mm -hmm. During um, Communion time, drinking communion, taking communion is the way we are expressing our, commun our worship. During word time, receiving, speaking the word and receiving the word is the way we are, we are expressing our worship. Even ushering, um, the janitors, cleaning the place is all part of the worship. And so the, the music ministers, our role is to offer musical worship. Our part of the service is we take the offering of the music the worship of the worship part how do i put it our part of the worship service is to lead the music the congregation in music towards god so you stand there is god there is a congregation and there is me god is ready to receive and to manifest and to bless us two factors that can affect the manifestation of god towards us is the music uh, ministers ill preparation and then the congregations ill preparation so whilst we are preparing we must also prepare the congregation is that preparing the congregation part that the the pastors and the worship leaders here i mean if there, there's a way to prepare because you see someone puts some <coughs> excuse me something in the chat which which um symbolizes it he says let our 
let our fires combine. That reminds me of Captain Planet. Captain and so, Planet. yeah, it, it, it um, brings to the fact that once my, my BVs are prepared, once um, we have pockets of people who are ready to receive from God, it makes um, invoking the presence of God in the atmosphere um, very, very easy. Um, Zero, right. Zero, exactly. Zero. Right. I, I see your hands up. If you want to ask a question, you can. Or I'll read what we have here. Okay, so while, while Bright comes in, uh, <laughs> so because you are saying everyone needs to prepare in the entire yeah. service, someone is asking, can, <laughs> can the person who is chosen to do the opening prayer when it begins the service make or unmake the atmosphere before the worship leader comes in? Anybody in the service can, can make or unmake the service especially the leaders. Even the one who gives announcements can come and mess up the whole place by the, the way they go about the announcement. So even the announcement should be worshipful. I don't, like, I don't know how to express a worshipful announcement, but even that everybody should be like, the, the moment you are standing in there, then for Christ's sake, in the Old Testament, if people went, this, one of the sons of Aaron went to offer wrong yeah. fire and he was consumed though. So the fact that we are in the dispensation of grace does not mean we should do things anyhow. For the Lord our God is a consuming fire, though he does not consume his children. Yeah. Do, do you understand? Yeah. So yes, everyone. So this, how do we, so there are ways we can do that. One is um, from church leadership angle, there's a deliberate preparation or preaching or teaching of the congregation how to respond to the music, uh, musical worship session or during ministrations. It is one. There is, see, there are churches, there are one or two churches I go and all you need to do is just leave the, leave the song and the place is some way. Yeah. And the kind of response that the people will respond to it, you now you know that you are not a person God is using to do anything. The place is already ready. So one of the things I do when I'm going to a, a place is, and which I also do for service is during my preparation, I pray for the congregation. I pray. One of the things I pray that, Lord, I bring the hearts of the people I'm going to minister to before you, especially if I'm going to a place where I don't know, I bring it before you. Lord, make their hearts receptive. Let them um, open their hearts to you. May you oh, grant them grace to open their minds, their hearts, and everything to you. And then it, 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 God moves in a powerful way most of the time when I pray this prayer. I mean, imagine an instrumentalist, a keyboard. Isaac, I see your face here with your brother, who have invested prayer in, before coming to church, that God Barabu. uses their, their talent, their playing, everything yeah. to, to invoke his presence. The worshiper yeah. who is going to do that has also done that. The BVs have done that. I think it, in a nutshell, once the entire crew or everyone in there is prepared, it's easier for God to visit them. That even yeah. brings to mind, I think I made um, a visit to one church in Benin, I think six years ago. And mm. you know these French guys, their songs are not really lyrical. And yeah. it's just, I think just three words and for about 30 to 40 minutes, that's all, those words were all they sang. And the, the, you could tell the presence of, of God there. So I agree with the fact that we have to ensure that pockets, everyone is prepared to receive yeah. from God. And everyone is doing yeah. their bit. And I really like um, what you just said. And I think we should all note it, um, which is the fact that even before we go and play or before we go and lead worship, we need to pray for the people we are going to lead and the church so that God yeah. prepares. You know, the word of God comes and it falls on fertile ground and people receive it well or it falls on thorns. So in the same way as ministers, aside praying for ourselves, for God to use us, 
I think your point is great that we need to also invest some prayer for the people we are going to lead so their hearts are prepared and then God yeah. can actually come down. I, Danny, that's, this, that's the, number, the third way I'll bring up to, I'm talking about the church, I'm talking about uh, preparation, pre, uh, preparing the audience during your preparation. I've spoken about that one too. The other one too is now you now it is time to minister. You have gone to stand before the people. Now there is there if you have prepared well, God would have given you um, a message for the people. And normally this is the message you normally would deliver as part of your what we call the call to worship, which is the few like 30 seconds where you you mm. you preach out or you say, I'm not even talking about preach, I'm talking about share or say before you lift a song. That in the case of uh, you going to a place and the place is a, a hard ground and things, this 30 seconds like sharing has the ability, if you are really in tune with God, eh, yeah. to sort of break certain barriers and yeah. instantly set the tone for the, the entire service. It's very important. Unfortunately, most of us music ministers, because we do not really spend time, we only are more concerned about the letter of the song and not the spirit of the song. We have prepared more in the, in the area of the technicality than the spirituality. And so when we, are, we go to stand before the people, we are found wanting. And then some, of, some people have messed up services with strange theologies because they were not really ready. Because of that, in certain congregations now, like in the case of, for example, ICGC, you are not permitted as a music minister to sort of preach, preach before you. or even the semblance <laughs> of it before you minister. So I believe that if we really take up our positions well, I think it will help. Personally, I encourage that every music minister be trained like a pastor. Apart from their music, musical training, I believe that every music minister should be trained like a pastor because that is our role. We are pastors. We don't speak the, we don't say the word just using vocal, uh, like talking. orally, we're yeah. talking. We sing the word. That is so. That is who we are, and so we must really, really be well versed in. Yeah, this. thank you. It says the time is coming, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yeah. For the yeah. Father seeketh such to worship yeah. Him. Um, thank you, yeah. Mama. Uh, God is not it? seeking. God is not seeking. Though, um, uh, excellent musicianship is important. Um, of more importance to him is being his disciple. It is your being his disciple that will qualify you to use your music for him. Okay, Eugene, there's an interesting question. Someone sent it to me backstage, and I think this is, yeah. this is a little touchy. He says that, so yeah. where does skill and rehearsal and um, the technicalities come in play? So I, uh, when someone doesn't know how to sing, but then we call the person to come do worship. And I'm sure a lot of musicians are, are here. And um, when someone doesn't know how to, I mean, in terms of the technicality, the person hasn't prepared, um, how do we relate? Is it possible for such a person to um, bring down the presence of God during worship? I mean, for instance, um, um, for want of a better word, um, sometimes, um, the worship leader is late, and then um, a prayer papa is called to come lead the worship. And wow. once the prayer papa picks it up, the other worshippers are angry because they think that the, the, the man is not skillful in that sense. So where does skill come in, into play with this? You see, I'm beginning to blow in tongues. Kabarabu, <laughs> Sabare, and let me announce to us that the shock of our lives is that worship is not limited to music. Yeah, yeah. Worship service can take place in a, an okay in a place without the need of a qualified musician. 
have been to places where the prayer papa come to take the leads with his abuchi voice and the whole place is basara yeah that notwithstanding we are not saying that skill i've never mentioned here that skill is not important please like i want to make that clear register that i said that one of the main criteria that sent david to the to the palace of king saul was that they were looking for someone who had excellent skill it is important that every, the carpenter should have the ability to 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 do carpentry work the plumber should have the ability to do plumbing if you take a fitter or a mechanic to go and do surgery for somebody's heart you will notice that engine oil will be coming out so it is very very important very very important that the basic skill of music be possessed by the person but what i'm trying to say is that with regards to the presence of god and bringing the people into the presence of god it is it is not limited to just to being excellent in skill okay when you read um exodus and uh, no ecclesiastes 10 10 it says that if the axe be blunt it will require a greater effort to um to cut down a tree so skill helps is is like the skill is the tool the more sharp it is as in the more skillful you are the more efficient you are in delivering the technicality of it but that would have been it we would have left it at artistry and technicality if we were doing something worldly and there is nothing god or jesus about it but because we are doing it in the house of god we go beyond just possession of skill but we start necessarily from having some level of skill okay the that's 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 great i think that settles it because i'm i'm sure a lot of people were wondering whether it takes only skill to do um to be a good worshiper and bring the presence of god um guys let's keep our questions coming i'm trying to read one from here yeah um someone says that <laughs> is it possible to fake the presence of god uh, because sometimes uh and once you are talking about fake, then I think it's bringing a, a, a question out of me to um, on on controlling um, where they, they they see a young sister who is called to do worship and immediately he, he sings one or two songs. He starts jumping all around. Um, is it possible to fake? And um, how are you able to tell that um, this is not what is happening? And at the same time, to um, how is one con? controlled in that in that sense if there's um there's any word like that so fake atmosphere or or is it able to are you is one able to fake um the presence of god that's that's the person's question danny um in uh, for as long as there is the devil eh, for as long as satan exists eh, we we would always have duplicates of everything godly so yes in my opinion or in my experience i think it is possible to fake um the anointing or the presence and um fake in the sense that you can mimic some of the features of a real manifestation of god's presence it can be mimicked for example, like I said, the fact that we are ministering or we are singing a song and somebody is ruling on the floor does not necessarily mean that yeah. the presence of God is there. Yeah. Just playing emotional chords and singing in a certain way alone can evoke such response. Where the person's soul is appealed to and so the person can give a soulish response. You see, the funny thing is that the real thing, the, when we say fake, we mean that the thing looks so much like the real thing that you almost 
would have to be an expert to, dis to know the two. So there are people, yes. Do you know even, do you know there are songs, there are chord, chord progressions that will make you feel like, like it, it changes your mood. Especially these suspended chords that we that normally is used in these hill songs. In the hill songs, I think well, sometimes I move to feel like there are a lot of people who don't like hill songs anymore because they feel like there's a lot of manipulative um, tendency in in this, the arrangement of the songs. But well, we are not the people who judge. The best um, way to judge whether something is fake or not with regard to spirituality is look at the, the overall impact of the thing. And that is normally, can normally be determined on an individual basis. We come, you enter into certain worship services, and by the time you finish, yes, you go on the floor and all that, but you leave convicted with a burden to want to see God more. There are services you enter and you are just, after all this, you are just excited and when you leave the service, it's as if nothing happened. So it is difficult to determine. Fake is possible. It is, but it's difficult to, um, to uh, what do you call it? Um, to, to, to uh, what, how, how do I put it? To notice it or something. And then in any case, it's based more on the, the long-term effect it has on the congregation or, or the individual. Very important. Okay. Can um, a congregation be manipulated? Yes, a congregation can be manipulated. Yes. For example, um, you know, I don't know. I've done that a, long, a lot of times. It's recently that I have learned, I learned this thing and I had to stop. Um, like people have come to service and you notice that people, they are not really moving, really moving, uh, responding to you. I say, um, um, if you don't worship, you are being ungrateful. People like us, like you and I, today, today, somebody passed through Kanesha where you passed and had an accident and, an accident. and died. <laughs> but you are here today. Why don't you worship God and lift up your hands? That is not the reason why the person should worship. The person should worship God because is God. Hmm. Things like that. Yeah. Interesting. There are, there are three quick questions. Let me put them together. Um, please, please. Yeah, Michelle, I think what uh, Michelle is saying, Pastor, please, then it means that it is possible to lead worship without singing. Yeah, I actually think it, it, it yeah, is. Um, yeah, and um, uh, is it okay to do a rehearsed worship? It's okay to do a rehearsed worship, but um, what you are calling rehearsed is praying about um, the service in advance and then the Lord laying down songs on your heart in consultation with the team and even the, the lead pastor and then selecting the songs to agree with what is being preached on the day and preparing thoroughly for it. So in that sense, yes, it is possible. Let me repeat myself again. So you are not rehearsing the songs because you've just gone to take ad hoc songs, unrelated songs, and you have come to um, rehearse it and you are presenting just out of the blue. No, 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 no. But um, just like pastor has done three months or 10, 40 days prayer to decide that I am doing a series on relationship, you would also have to have a meeting with the music director or uh, the music pastor or the head pastor of the church to decide, Daddy, this month, what are you preaching about? Then Daddy will give you the theme. You do your work study on the theme and then you choose and select songs based on as you pray about it and so that is, that is not necessarily a rehearsed song out of the blue, but a rehearsed song informed by what the vision is, the direction is for the service. For, for, for uh, crying out loud, 
David wrote songs and sent it to the musicians to prepare for it mm -hmm. before the ministration. It's, it's, the it's, that it is, it's good you are bringing this up because um, normally when we talk about rehearsed worship, all we are thinking about is um, the coordination between the lead singer singing, the BVs getting their parts, the instrumentalists being able to play the songs, and the fact that we no, chose no, no. the songs. Do, do you guys more, feel, those, yeah. Those ones are just the technical transitions between the songs. And even those ones, are, they just come in after the process of the songs have been selected. And during rehearsal, we have all, the songs are there. Instrumentalists, music director, BBs and everybody, we spend time to pray into the song yeah. and ask the Lord, how would be the, how, what would you want to be the best presentations of this song so that it will be impactful to the people you are bringing to church on that uh, day? So when we are, we are playing through and things, the Lord will be dropping the ideas. You notice that normally the ideas will come from almost everywhere. The role of the music director is to be like the, um, the, the, the lighthouse, the guide light, who the guide through the Holy Spirit, who knows what the atmosphere should be for the day. And so his work would be to coordinate all the ideas and put it together so that it can be presented on the day. It's nothing at all. Oh, when I listen, Taitibe played it this way, so no, 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 no. It's not ad hoc. Not ad hoc at all. This, this is enlightening because then it means that when we talk, talk about rehearsed worship before Sunday, it's not just getting us to come do the technicalities, but when we come, the songs we've chosen, we all have to go pray about it. Um, let's see whether it's, it's in sync and everything. So it's not, give to, yeah, you can ask your, your question. Unmute your mic, give to unmute your mic. Hi, everybody. Can you hear, yeah, we can can hear, you hear you. me? Yeah, yeah okay, we can good. hear you, Gipsy. Um, I'm not really, um, um, okay, let me start this way. Now, when it comes to rehearsed worship, the little that I also know is that, um, yes, you can have your series of songs that you, you would have rehearsed, okay? Because, of course, you want the backing to be right. You want everything else to be right but you, you will not do it in isolation of your fellowship with God, okay? So you might have your rehearsed worship, but then you should be flexible and open enough yes. and sensitive yes. enough to know yes. that God wants you to go a particular direction. Yeah. It's, hap yes. it's happening to me, I mean, most of the time, sometimes before I leave the worship, I pray everything. In my mind, they are saying songs that sound so nice, so beautiful. I know the church will love it. But when I stand in front of the people, I start a song, I start another one. Then another song drops in my spirit. That's a lot. Now, so in between, there's a very, you know, there's, you, you need to make a split second decision, whether to sing that song that just dropped in your spirit or go with your normal rehearsed songs. Now, on the days that I go like, okay, let me just ignore this and go with my normal rehearsal song, I feel the presence sort of come down. I lose it, you know, and then the worship becomes some way. But when you switch to whatever falls within your spirit, it sort of lifts up the, the, the atmosphere a bit. So it's a personal experience that you, you, you can, and that's the difference between us and the people of the world. And that brings me to the skill, like the, the difference between the, like the skillful people and the true worshiper. Look, Kwejoin Chi can pick up um, um, words from the Bible. Shatawali can pick up words from the Bible and sing anything because they are skillful, but it won't be necessarily worship. It won't necessarily command the presence of God. I'm not saying they are unbelievers, but it depends on your fellowship with God, everything, and your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit and everything. Thank you. Bless you. So... That gift, I was about to say that um, a lot of people don't like the rehearsed setting, so called spiritual uh, brethren do not like the rehearsed worship because they feel it, um, it hinders them from flowing. But you see, um, God is also a God of order, and so He likes us to do things in order, but then 
the fact that the thing, the re, uh, worship service is rehearsed, does not mean that it puts you in a mood. Yeah. What you what you explain is the maturity of someone who is experienced in leading worship, and I commend you really, really for that. But you see, the reason why you can even know clearly that you should do consider a song or a song that is being placed in your spirit is that you have a plan and you know where you are going. So you know when the Holy Spirit is stepping in to say, okay, so hold on to this, move on to this, go here yeah. and go here. That is why being rehearsing is very important because it gives us a kind of direction. But it does not mean that at all times, it is only that rehearsal that is successful. I, I'm sure uh, Isaac Omari is there listening to me. I can see his nice face. He would bear in mind that I am someone who normally am most effective when I flow freely without any inhibition when I'm leading worship. So we can decide to do well rehearse our own songs. When the day comes and the Holy Spirit gives me the direction that move this way, I can forget all about the songs we have I, I, I rehearsed and move in that particular way. Let me shock you. Danny, um, you played Okasa at the beginning of this uh, meeting when I joined. Um, when we were recording the Okasa, uh, pro, the, that project in Takra the, uh, earlier in March, this album, this song was not part of the, Okasa was not part of the repertoire. Yeah, I heard. But whilst we were on stage, I felt strongly in between songs, in between the scoring songs, I felt strongly the song just welled up like, a, like, like some spring in my spirit. And so I lifted it up. It is the same, that, like that thing that was coming like an explosion in me. That is, you will see that I really, like I was really, really straining and pushing it out. And that, that was the way I felt. And that's how the song came out. And for that night, that song was, was such a blessing to people. Even people felt like it was like a new song, yeah. a new song. So I agree with Sister Gifty, and I think it's something that we should really learn. And in, in relation to that same, I think, um, oh, it's wonderful to get a question from the Chief of Staff, uh, Apostle Mengo. <laughs> um, in relation to the same thing, oh, I think Pastor Eugene's... Um, Just a second, we have just about five minutes to close. Um, I think he had an issue with his, uh, with his battery. So let's see if we are able to get him back on just a second. Sorry, I went offline, <laughs> I went offline sorry. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my connection. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, <laughs> yeah, we can. Hi. I think I was asking a question and my, my mic was off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Great. Yeah. Great, um, great, great. So, Osofo, yes. the question from yes. uh, question coming is that where do we place the, the rehearsal before worship concerts? Some do it two months, three months, even outside. Some people do a whole year rehearsed time before a worship concert. So where do we place, uh, place those ones? Um, unlike I, the, I think that, yeah. Danny, I think that for that kind of worship concert, it's based normally on a lot of factors, including the scale level, what the person hopes to achieve, and all that. Personally, um, I can hold... I can hold a worship 
uh, service even tomorrow morning. I can hold a worship service tomorrow morning. If I have certain kinds of a certain kind of team, like for example, if I have my team, like my regular team that I work with, I can hold a worship service tomorrow morning if that is what God is leading me to do. Because then, in terms of it being a worship service, my only focus would be to lead the people into the presence of God. And I wouldn't be thinking about my technical correctness so much and stuff. And I know that my team can hold basic chords and basic keys and basic harmonies and stuff, and I'll be fine. But sometimes, for most people, apart from everything else, Charlie, we are looking at a, set, a certain level of quality and excellence, which does not necessarily affect the presence of God. Then you get me? Yeah. So it depends on what the aim of the person is and what they want to achieve at the end of the day. Okay. That's a big question. And I yes. think there are some pastors here, so it's also okay. sensitive. Um, someone wants to know, <laughs> he says that, um, where does a worshiper or a praise leader who is not appreciated, I don't know what the word appreciate means, but who is not appreciated by the, the, the pastor in charge of the church and um, things like, um, because, okay, I, th I think I get the guy. Um, you know, some past, where the pastor says, uh, maybe or the pastor does not invest into music, the pastor does not um, um, mind the instrumentalist, does not appreciate the work they are doing, the praise team is doing, um, when their things get spoiled, the pastor, the, the church does not repair it and all that. Um, does that affect the, the entire worship atmosphere or does it inhibit the, the, the presence of God to happen because um, one, they are not being appreciated, two, um, the church does not look like they are really into 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 music and they don't want to take uh, music things um, i think that's what the Danny, um, that that is not saying steve at all it's actually a straightforward qu uh, question and answer you see um we must always know that there is a spiritual aspect of the ministry we are doing and there is a human aspect also of it and both go hand in hand to affect the overall output definitely if a pastor gives the um, the music team the impression that they are not appreciated or needed or cared for eventually it will affect in their output you see one of the when you read the, the book of chronicles you will notice that david really 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 took really good care of the company of musicians their entire families were in their numbers thousands of them were actually catered for in the Levit Levitical uh, provision. So they were not working. In the tabernacle of David, they ministered day and night before the, the Ark of the Covenant. And David took care of them. They had food provision, accommodation provision, and all that. And so um, it is, and they, because of that, they joyfully served, the, did the bidding of the king. It is very important that pastors, especially church leaders, if they deem the music team to be very important, and rightly so, the music team is very important to our modern or contemporary worship service worship. It is very important for them to be well catered for. If they're for one reason or the other, they are, it's not able to be done, and they will need to do certain sacrifices uh, for the ministry they do, there must be clear communication between the church leadership and then the music ministers. And in the name of um, Christian conduct, it is also very important that music ministers and the music ministry learn to be humble and to be long-suffering and enduring, to know that um, certain impasses between the choir and then the leadership must be settled in an amicable way because at the end of the day, it is God we are seeking to glorify. And so things like sabotage and things like um, uh, demonstration and things like protests um, 
it's, it's best to protest in prayer and protest by respectfully appealing to authority than to uh, do things. I've been in choirs where, forgive me, in the past where we have, we have, um, we have seized the drumstick. Yeah, we have seized the a, drum. a cable <laughs> or removed and uh, we removed a, a capacitor from uh, uh, this thing, uh, um, an amplifier, just to register our protest. But later we realized, Charlie, it's not right. It's not godly. All right, great. Guys, I think our time is up. Uh, 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 this one is part 1A. It's not even part 1B, part 1A. It means that <laughs> we, would, we would actually pray and hope that we get the opportunity to meet in person so that um, we can engage them more. Um, Gifty, I know you want to ask a question. I'll give, I'll give just Comment. two or three, two more questions and then we will, we will take okay. it from here. Our time is up. Okay, Gifty. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so as a quality, I know people come to me and then they make a lot of these complaints. But um, in addition to what Pastor Eugene said, we should know that every church um, is different in terms of logistics and capacity. Yes. Of yeah. where they are going, the future the Lord has placed on the heart of the church, the leadership, etc. Cetera, yes. etc. Cetera. So some churches would want to invest more in music than others. You know, yes. so if you get a church who is all about evangelism, then he is likely to buy a bus and then train more evangelists, etc., rather than choristers. You know, yes. I mean, different churches and what they are doing, and we are all doing that to better the kingdom of God. So, as singers, one thing we should desist from doing is looking at what some churches are doing maybe you go to empowerment you see all these modern things because you are skillful yes i know you are skillful so you wish you had this level of guitar so you can play it in church but your church is not the same and um, so at the end of the day you should rely on god to be the one who will reward you rather than your pastor yeah. appreciating you yeah. and then we should also learn to invest in our own ministry yeah. okay yeah. if you were going to school or you are working somewhere, you invest to get a degree, you invest to, to, to get a diploma or to charter in the course. It's the same thing you should do to your ministry. If you feel that you can afford a guitar, a college mic to get your ministry, why not? Please do it. Thank you. God bless you. But I, I also want to encourage um, our church leadership to know that we can't eat our cakes and have it. Danny, I'm done. <laughs> that was that was a I thought you were, that was a <laughs> I thought you were going to Okay, so out. what I mean by we can't eat our cake and have it yeah, is this. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the level of talent you attract gives you a responsibility to do certain things to keep those talents. Most of us here are really excited about things that churches like Christ Embassy have done for their music ministers. And we wish that it could also be done for us. Please, our church leaders should also know that times are changing. And therefore, some level of um, commitment should be made. Look, every large national or church denomination or church must have a music school. And then groom, just like we groom our evangelists and our pastors and we groom our... Um, prophets and co we must also groom our musicians from scratch because see there are musicians who are supposed to who are supposed to be to profess or be prophetic within their music some are to be a uh, past, past pastors within their music others are evangelists within their music so we want to encourage uh, churches to also invest in these areas and we'll be amazed the things uh, god will do i believe Yes, there are various areas of concentration. But concentration is a great thing. All right. Um, they just. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I missed your question. So let me allow you to ask. Your question will be the last one, and then we'll close from here. I think you had. You've been trying to get my attention. Um, yeah. 
you can go ahead and ask your question. Hello, yeah. Okay. Um, if Yah comes in, yeah, I, will, I think she raised her hand a, a long time ago. Um, okay. Also for you, Jen, God bless you so much. Um, this has been insightful and learning care for um, every one of us here. I see instrumentalists here, I see music directors here, I see worship leaders here, I see praise leaders here. I even see, oh, some are already waving. I even see people who have nothing to do with uh, music, I mean, <laughs> literally, who are also yeah, here, who also want to. We have our congregation here too. <laughs> they they um, the congregation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 great. Hey, and again, I and Isaac. I wish uh, we could see our faces. So, um, um, hi guys. Uh, maybe the yeah, next time Pastor Yuju will be coming to your church. Okay. So God bless you so much. Um, also for you, Jane, we are we are grateful, um, for your for your time, and um, we pray that we'll get another opportunity, and we pray that the anointing of God upon you increases on each passing minute, each passing hour, and every time. Um, it's great to it's great to have you all here. Um, I I I will promise that I'll try and get also for you, Jane, for us to have a face to face. One so that we, we, we can engage more. Um, yeah. Uh, Eugene, thank you so much. I mean, when, when I asked thank you, you to join, it was, it, was, it, was, it was an easy thing for you to accept, and we appreciate it so much. <laughs> thank you again for the learning curve. You always said, Thank um, you. For God to use you. I mean, you. All right, guys. So um, tomorrow we, we have another interesting time with. Um, Reverend uh, Pastor um, Helen Yorsen. Um, unfortunately, I think she has she has um, an engagement between six to eight. So our time has been shifted to four p.m. Let's note that, and her session is more of questions and answers um, in relation to technicalities, voice management, how to sing, how to increase your pitch, how to manage your your tone, how to train yourself to become a good singer. So, uh, because she's a renowned coach. So let's make time, let's come in early so that we can ask all the questions we need to. Um, if someone doesn't know how to sing in the choir, do we sack the person? How do we train the person and everything? Um, wow, Evans, I see your face. I see a lot of people. Um, also for Fred, God bless you. Alice, God bless you guys. Um, Joshua, wow. Um, all right, their names are a lot. God bless you guys. Let's meet tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, let's encourage all our other choruses to join. It's an interesting learning curve for us all. Okay, now I'm seeing a lot of faces. Some are from the US and the UK. Oh, oh, the entire family from the Takrade. They are the only ones I'll give shout out to because they are coming from far. <laughs> yeah, Betty from US, I see you. Greetings to your husband. God bless you all. Let's meet tomorrow again at 4 p.m. Let's ask all the questions. God bless you. Have a good Hey, now night. you are spoiled. Gifty, I acknowledge you from US. <laughs> Hurry up and come back home. <laughs> all right, God bless Tell you. Tell you all. shut border. See you tomorrow. All right, bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.